A tsunami can occur in many forms. Usually, it is a catastrophic wave. But I want you to think about it as a trauma whose effects change your life forever, like a brain tumor. <laughs> the hurt, despair, and grief can feel interminable. But to move forward, we have to accept that the past can never be different. And in this process, we obtain the freedom to forgive and to evolve to a better place. Hello, I'm Arthur Weinfeld. I'm here with my wife, Judy. Together, we live in Scottsdale, Arizona in the winter, and then in the summer, we go up to Park City, Utah. Together, we have five children and nine grandchildren. What are your hobbies? I, I'm a practicing yogi and have gotten very involved in the Native American flute. Tell us about how you discovered that you had a tumor. My eyesight in my right eye has been deteriorating, and I assume because of my age, 77, it was a cataract. I like to tell the story about a duck. You know, if, if it quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, you know it's a duck. But guess what? Sometimes it's not a duck. Sometimes it's something else, like a brain tumor. The next day after the MRI, I got a call. Yeah, His first words were, sit down. And he explained to me that I had a very large tennis ball size tumor, a meningioma, and needed to be operated. He was very cautious and, frankly, uh, and not very optimistic. He, he didn't really think that maybe it could be, it was operable. Yeah, I know. He was very, he was very cautious. And what I'm so grateful to him for is referring me to the Barrow Neurological Institute and Dr. Peter Nakaji, who was my neurosurgeon. So that's somewhat of a surprise. <laughs> somewhat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you had now had a scan of your head before at any yeah. time. Okay. And how is the vision now? Tammy said you can still finger count? Yeah, five. But yeah, how about back here? Um, I see him five, wiggly, a fist. Um, maybe one. Okay. But it's very blurry. Yeah. And I, pl I'm a, I play music. Mm -hmm. the, these are your eyeballs, and these are the nerves coming out, and your nerve actually comes here, and see how it stretches over this big white thing? This big white thing is all tumor. It's, oh, crap. All this is tumor. Wow. All this is tumor. Been, uh, Impossible to say without a scan before, growing. but they're slow growing, and I bet you if we had looked 10, 15 years ago, we would have seen a little tumor, and it bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. Yeah, your coronary artery, we like it when the tumor is lifting the coronary artery like an arm laying on a pillow. Right. But yours is really like uh, a arm in a bucket of sand. Oh, terrific. It's Can completely... It? Well, the answer is yes, and we're going to do that. Um, but there's certainly more um, risk to the artery when it's so deep inside. We, we had the celebration of life, and there 70 of our supporters came, and I was able to play the tsunami. Um, the, one of the more powerful things about doing that is I invited Dr. Nakaji and his team to come to the celebration, and he did. And to be able to, to play that kind of for him and for the group was profound for me. So what was uh, really uh, symbolic for me is that two days later you had the follow-up appointment with Dr. Nakaji, and he basically said what? You didn't need to. <laughs> yeah, he d I didn't need to come. He had already done a, 
a, a, a, diagnostic, a, a diagnostic evaluation of me. Uh, Anything else you want to share? I think one thing that I do want to say is that to support the National uh, Brain Tumor Society uh, and getting involved in, in that organization it is very, has been very healing for me. And I invite anyone, you know, whether they have a brain tumor or not, to, su to support the organization and help those of us who... Uh, who are struggling with this uh, with this illness?